time to talk about chemistry or more about chemistry. I did we did we did the phases before. So the main chemistry unit conversion is grams to moles. And the main chemical unit in chemistry is the mole. In Latin, the word uh, moles uh, means a pile or a heap. So a mole is a convenient pile or heap of atoms or molecules. Um, so, uh, and it just so happens that a convenient pile or heap is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms or molecules. Um, now, I see a comment about a uh, mole flow chart. So, uh, Mike, uh, I'd be interested to see that. I've seen some of them. If you'd be willing to share it with students in the class, that'd be great. I can put it on the Blackboard site. Or, um, but yes, it is like we will do, like I said, we do 300 plus um, unit conversions. 200 plus at least of those will be grams to moles and then grams to atoms and then moles back to grams. So this is, that's why on day one, we start on this because that's, you're gonna do it. We want you to get lots of practice. Okay, so, um, right. One mole of carbon, C is carbon, equals 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of carbon. We can do it for carbon. It's the same number for nitrogen and it's also the same number for H2O, water, except instead of atoms, it's now molecules, okay? So this number, also called Avogadro's number, is hugely important. We use it quite a bit, okay? And, but otherwise, it's a number just like one dozen is a number. How many is one dozen? Of course, it's 12, okay? So how many is a mole? Well. 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd is a much larger number, it's true, but it's still just a number. And uh, I apologize if that's a little out of focus. So yeah, there we go, that's a little better. Okay, but what I wanna point out to you is these are equal statements. And any two things that are equal, we can convert into a unit conversion factor like so, meaning one mole of carbon per, where the division symbol means per, per 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of carbon, or we can change or exchange the numerator and denominator there are 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of carbon per one mole of carbon. So any two things that are equal can become unit conversion factors. And we could do it for nitrogen. We could do it for H2O. I'm gonna toss in one for H2O right now. And I'm going to use 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of H2O. Per one mole H2O. Okay. So same process. Now we're doing the chemistry with it. Um, so C is an atom, N is an atom, H2O is a molecule. O2 is a molecule. Okay? Because we have more than one atom in the formula. Um, I see another question. Do we have time after the lecture for us to set our lecture notes before submitting? Yes. Also, do we have to write everything since we don't have the lecture package or just write your notes? So today, 
you just have to write the stuff that I'm writing and turn it and eventually turn it in okay so um, after today you have to have everything yeah no problem so I, I'm and just so you know I super am serious about asking as many questions as you want if I mean if we got 50 questions and we weren't gonna get through lecture I might say let's defer some questions to office hours, but we haven't gotten even close to that yet. So keep those questions coming. All right. So, if a mole is that many, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms or molecules, then the numbers on the periodic table under the chemical symbol are the grams of one mole of that element. So let me get my periodic table. And let's look at carbon. So carbon, there it is. The number under carbon is 12.01. That is grams equal to one mole. So one mole carbon equals 12.01 grams of carbon. And both of those are equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of carbon. So the bold part here is what's new, and this equal statement to the number of atoms was from the previous slide. But lo and behold, as soon as we write the two things are equal to each other, we then write the unit conversion factor. There are 12.01 grams of carbon, sorry, per has to go over here, because per is the division by symbol. 12.01 grams carbon per one mole carbon. And uh, this is called the molar mass. It is the mass of one mole. That's a one. And it is oftentimes written 12.01 grams per mole carbon. I see a question, can I have a look at page 20 after the lecture or during the break? Uh, of course. Uh, so we're gonna go straight till 11.30, and then at 11.30, we're going to have a half hour break to get some food, because um, we've been working hard this morning, uh, and this is a lot to pay attention to, I know. But when we break, I'll put page 20 up. Uh, that way you can see it, at least, and I'll leave it up there for the better part of lunch, unless we have other pages people want to see. Um, sometimes we'll write it like this, 12.01 grams carbon per one mole carbon, and of course, we can also write it the other way. There's one mole carbon per 12.01 grams carbon. And so we can write it either way, depending upon how we want our units to cancel out. Question, due date is September 2nd. Uh, uh, if uh, Bilik Bilikisu, I'm sorry if I mispronounced that. Uh, if that's what it says in Blackboard, then that is exactly what it is. Um, which is, yeah, we have like three days left. I just wasn't sure of the date. Uh, but if that's what Blackboard says, then that's it. All right, so now we have a whole bunch of new conversion factors. Uh, oh, uh, I, th I think I got ahead of myself. Any equal statement can become a unit conversion problem. Our most common one is the molar mass, the mass of one mole of a substance. So, uh, and question? Yes, can I please see the last thing really quick, please? You can see it really quick? Uh, yes, of course. In fact, we're going to do the same thing on the next page. Okay, okay. I'm fine now. Thank you. Good. So all we're going to do is and I, because I got a little ahead of myself, uh, I do get a little excited sometimes. Um, so uh, I'm going to cross out that extra one that snuck into there. This should really only be 12.01 grams carbon. And so the molar mass is the same thing I wrote on the last slide 12.01 grams carbon 
is equal to or per or divided by, all of those statements are the same, one mole carbon. And here for nitrogen, 14.01 grams nitrogen for one mole nitrogen. And I've got my periodic table right here. There is nitrogen, look, 14.01. That's the number under it. If we go all the way down to gold, and if the question was, how many grams of gold, gold is AU, how many grams of gold are there in one mole of gold? You would say 197.0 grams per mole of gold. Okay. So these numbers, that's why the periodic table is so useful because we do so much molar mass, so many molar mass calculations. All right, good refocus there, camera. So yes, that's all we need on this page. Now to example problems we can solve. How many moles and atoms are there in 28.9 grams of carbon? My given is always a number in my problem statement. G for given, 28.9. And now our units have two parts to them. They have G for grams and what they're grams of, what chemistry elements or molecule or compound. This is carbon. Because you can see the next problem is going to be 28.9 grams of gold, and that's a, a whole nother thing. Now from the previous slide, uh, and actually we can go back to, there's the, let's get that on. So the molar mass can be just like this, or it can be upside down, whichever way we need to get the units to cancel out. This time we need 12.01 grams of carbon on the bottom and one mole of carbon on top. And that's all we need. I made my line a little long here because, oh, because we have atoms to do, but we'll do atoms next. For moles, we now take 28.9, divide them by 12.01, and I get 2.41 with units of moles of carbon. Yeah, go to moles then atoms. That's what I typically do. So we're at moles now. And in the next calculation, I'm gonna go from moles to atoms. And for moles to atoms, one mole of anything, in this case carbon, is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. And because this is an atom, it's going to be atoms of carbon. And just a side note. Whenever, so I'm going to keep everything in lecture to three significant figures. So I have one, two, three significant figures in this answer. And then whenever I write a number, even if the calculator says a whole bunch of other digits, I'm going to go back to that number and then do more math. So when I do this one, I'm going to actually do 2.41 times 6.022 X minute button, 23rd. And I get 1.45 times 10 to the 24th atoms of carbon. Question, what's the difference between calculating moles to grams and grams to moles? Good question. So um, think of them as going, so as sort of opposites, but the way you tell what to do is if you are given grams, then you're gonna convert to moles, right, for this one. And if you're given moles, then you can convert back to grams. So that's why it's important to know what you're given in the problem statement is so you know which one to do. 
But again, we will do both, and we will do them many times. Okay, good question. Lots of good questions. I really appreciate them. Uh, let's see. Yeah, sure. Um, I think we're going to keep this as a companion problem for gold. But again, the companion problems are just good practice to do to make sure you understand a concept. And for lecture, we're now going to move on to molecules and compounds. It says we can calculate the molar mass of a molecule by adding up the molar masses of each of the atoms in the molecule. So question that I will now answer, what is the molar mass of water? H2O. So uh, on the periodic table, let's do this. So it's going to be 2 times the molar mass of H. And the molar mass of H, again, you just always go to your periodic table. The number underneath, 1.008. And the 2 comes because there's a 2 subscript. That means there's 2 hydrogens in this molecule. And I probably don't have to write the one for oxygen, but since these are your notes, I'm going to write it. One times oxygen is one times 16.00. And these are grams per mole for each of these. And then you add it up. And you get the molar mass of the compound or molecule. So all you'll have to do is, is add up all of the atoms to get the molecule. All right, so 2 times 1.008 plus, uh, I'm not going to do the 1 times, I'm just going to enter in the 16. And you can enter in 16.00 or 16, your calculator can't tell the difference. And I get 18.016, which I will round to 18.02. And this number, 18.02, is grams per mole of H2O. Okay. Now, again, I know all this is new, but hopefully what you see is we're very purposefully, slowly building up calculations that we can do with um, companion problems so that you can practice. And you'll see that the homework is also all of these calculations one after another so that you can practice. Okay? Can you hear me? Yes, Mike. Uh, sorry to interrupt you. Um, Not at all. When you're, when you're doing like these type of problems, uh, specifically mole problems, and you round it up to 18.02, can you briefly explain that rounding versus significant numbers? Is it the same thing to me if I can figure? I always get confused with that. So we essentially added that. So we will follow the addition rule for the six, six big rule or? That's exactly right, Mike. So you're following the addition rule. You can okay. see that the 16 number, the addition rule is fewest number of decimal places. Okay. And that's why, yeah. So does that answer your question? Yeah, I think I answered it as I was asking it. Just thinking out loud helps. All right, thank you. Sure. Uh, one additional point I'll make is that if it's 18.02 in this class, you do not just round it to 18. That will always be a mistake. So always keep two decimal places. Um, or let's say this. Always keep four sig figs for your molar masses. And uh, if you were to keep the 18.016 as part of your calculations, that would also be fine too from, because you're, you'd get the right answer. But the better way to do it is 18.02. So, and the wrong way to do it is to round to 18. And I know 18.02 is not that different, but it turns out to make enough difference sometimes. Next one is a companion problem for sodium chloride. And magnesium bromide is going to be a companion problem too because I want to tackle this one. 
This one is actually ammonium sulfate. I think I changed my lecture notes here, but I didn't change my naming here. So this is ammonium sulfate. And I want to do this one because this is about as complicated as the molar masses for molecules get. Um, so, and I want to talk about these parentheses. Parentheses mean, uh, so this parentheses in two means that there are two of everything in parentheses. That's what the two subscript here means, is there's two NH4s. And so we, of course, need to take account of that when we do our molar mass. And so when we do our molar mass, the proper way to count things up here is that there are two nitrogens. There are two times four or eight hydrogens. There's only one sulfur and there are four oxygens. And we're being very systematic about this. If you were working a problem on a homework or an exam, you wouldn't have to write out so many steps, but again, we're being very purposeful so you have good notes now, again, we've done, we've shown you a uh, nitrogen's box on the periodic table. It has the 14.01 in it. Hydrogen is the 1.008. We've done, actually, oxygen, too. And if you go to sulfur, 32.07. And it's 1 times 32.07. And very systematically, we will get, so making room for my calculator here, and I'm just going to put them all in the calculator together. So it's going to be 2 times 14.01 plus 8 times 1.008 plus 1 times 32, so just 32.07 plus 4 times 16 and it adds it up for me, I get 132.15 grams per mole. And the formula, grams per mole, and the name is ammonium sulfate, the formula is there. so important that you know and are able to use your calculator efficiently that will save you time and help you get the right answers and calculators if you remember from math class follow order of operations exponents go first or parentheses first then exponents then addition uh, sorry multiplication and division and then um, addition and subtraction all right uh, now we can start to do grams to moles and other conversions for molecules. There we go. Um, how many moles and molecules of H2O are there in 125.1 grams of H2O? Start with our given. And from a previous slide, we know that the molar mass of H2O is 18.02. And I put those grams on the bottom so that my grams cancel. You know, 90 plus percent of the math in this class is multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction question is, how do you put everything together? Uh, that's the hard part, I know. 125.1 divided by 18.02. I 
I get 6.94 moles of H2O. And now I can use that 6.94 moles to find the molecules. And it's at this point that I would like to, well, let me, let me write down this problem first. So one mole of H2O and one mole of anything is that number. Ah, uh, yes, PEMDAS, thank you, Mike. Uh, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of H2O. And I sort of ran out of space, but I'll put it here. Um, so in uh, this course and all chemistry classes, it's actually important to, if you're talking about molecules, write out the entire word. Otherwise, it's unclear whether you're talking about molecules or moles. So. If you're talking about moles, write M-O-L. If you're talking about molecules, write the whole word, please. All right, so I'm going to go back to my 6.94. I'm going to multiply it times 6.022 exponent 23rd, and I get 4.18 times 10 to the 24th, and my units are molecules H2O. Next one. Now this one, what is the mass of 1.20 times 10 to the 22nd molecules of ammonia, NH3? Let's go ahead and do that one because that's not the same problem, that's the opposite problem. Uh, I'm gonna need a little bit of space, so I'm gonna go all the way over to the left side of the page and start with the number in the problem as my given or starting point, 1.20 times 10 to the 22nd molecules NH3. And I'll block that off so you know it's associated with the other stuff, uh, the previous problem. Now, I'm gonna do this in two steps. You could do it in one step, but uh, the way things are organized in my head, um, I like to keep them like this. Question, how can we determine moles and molecules numbers, please? So um, if what you're referring to is how many sig figs we need, then always give me three sig figs, three digits. If, um, and, and if your question is how do we know the difference between a mole and a molecule, that's exactly what we're trying to get here, yeah. Um, so uh, here, how I do it is one mole of anything equals 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd of whatever that thing is. So a mole is always associated with that. And the other thing a mole is associated with is the molar mass. And the molar mass, remember, comes from adding up the numbers on the periodic table. Adding up the numbers on the periodic table. Uh, so uh, remember, we've been looking at the periodic table and we've been seeing that underneath fluorine F, 19.00, when you see an F in a compound, you're going to add 19.00 grams. That's what I mean by adding up the numbers on the periodic table under each element. And if I can say one more thing about that. So remember, I said we're gonna do something like 200 plus gram to mole calculations. We're gonna do about 10 to 20, including this Avogadro's number. Like, after lecture outline one and homework number one and maybe homework two, everything is grams to moles. And we tuck in the back of our head the fact that a mole is always equal to this 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd number. So if you're gonna learn anything, learn the gram to moles with the molar mass.
And of course, it would be nice if we learned everything, but I, that's why we give you these hints. Like, know how to do grams to moles like it's the back of your hand, certainly in a week or two. And that's, you'll see we get tons of practice doing it. So hopefully that answers your question. If not, we'll uh, talk more about it. Uh, we have lots of time today um, and uh, lots of lectures. But anyway, so think, mull that for a couple minutes and then we can talk more. Okay, so um, where were we? We have molecules, we're looking for mass. So this one up top, is always is what I'm going to do because I have uh, molecules and I notice this 10 to the 22nd. That's my another hint that I'm using this 6.022. So it's 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules, NH3 per one mole, NH3. And I'm sorry, but I still ran out of space. But I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna do it down here. If you have space, this is supposed to go up here. Well, I'll do it in a different color. Cause so one mole NH3. And again, to find the grams in a mole, you're gonna go to the periodic table, add up the numbers, and it will be 17.03 grams of NH3 where it's 14.01 for nitrogen plus three times 1.008. I apologize, that's I know sloppy work on my part. But it's out there, so now it's done. So let's go ahead and do the math part. So 1.2, X minute button, 20 second, divided by 6.022, X minute, 23rd, times 17.03 and I get 0 0.339 grams ammonia where all my other units have canceled out, my molecules of ammonia canceled out and my moles of ammonia canceled out as well leaving me with some math to do and my units of grams of ammonia, NH3. Okay. Any questions about that? Does the H2O problem need to be four sig figs? Four sig, so if I was following the, uh, yes, good point. I have four sig figs here. I have four sig figs here. Had I done my sig figs properly, I would have four sig figs in my answer. Uh, but in lecture, I tend to default to three sig figs. So, but in lab, we will do sig figs 100% correctly, even me. And you can, and, and had your answer been to four sig figs, thumbs up, 100% correct. Okay. So we have about three minutes left before we break for lunch. Um, that is not enough time to do these problems. So let me just say what we're gonna do after lunch. When we come back after lunch, we're gonna keep going on these lecture notes because according to the schedule, we have to finish these lecture notes today. And I know it's a ton of lecture and I appreciate you hanging with me while we do it. And then after we finish the lecture, I will go over how the class runs. And I bet we still get out of here um, early. Um, and uh, just another thing I'll say is, I know this is a lot of lecture, uh, but doing a lot of lecture on day one, allow and doing it very purposefully, and uh, not, uh, and I apologize if it seems fast, but we are going very systematically as well. Um, and hopefully that's what you'll find for the class is we will cover things exactly in order. We will build up and build up and um, then we will practice things. And hopefully when you look back on this in a week, it won't seem so fast. I know it's a lot to digest today. 
But um, with that, I will take a minute or two in case you have any questions. Otherwise, we will meet back here at noon. Um, I think at my house at least it was raining um, but I don't think it I can't see from here for sure from here looks like it stopped raining so I might even yeah I might even go outside for a few minutes are there any questions before we break yeah are these sessions recorded yes uh, and what I said very early this morning I know was that it takes me a day or two sometimes to get the sessions posted in the blackboard but yes these sessions are recorded any other questions Yes. Uh, since I came late, I would like to know uh, about how to submit uh, the outline. How to submit what? The lecture outlines? Yes. Yes. So uh, what you will do, and I'm actually going to go ahead and stop the recording.